Top 10, top I got a top 10, 10. Top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10 Gotta learn from the wise women and men Need motivation? Watch your top 10. Where's the Believe Nation? Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to hustle, ensure your success, and delegate your weaknesses with Sarah Blakely and my take on her top 10 rules of success, volume five. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, hustle. I feel like hustle is um, the willingness to work really, really hard, and then also your willingness to get the job done, like um, kind of navigating and doing what it takes. And, um, and so, I, yeah, I've, there's so much about my journey where I was like, I am not going to let the outcome or my success be contingent on other people as much as I can control it, help it, navigate it, I'm going to. So, um, so yeah, in the beginning, especially still now, I mean, obviously I'm hustling. I'm like at the, at this, where I am now and I'm running around the airport asking people to follow me on Instagram, you know? Uh, I, do, I just feel like it's innate in me also to a degree. Um, but the, uh, in the beginning, ex like there's a few examples that come to mind. You mentioned that I paid my, I called my friends and asked them to go buy Spanx and I wrote everybody checks and sent them a check um, because I needed to drive momentum and I had no money to advertise. So I'm like, this product's gonna sit on the shelf. So I needed to get people to go in and buy it. I also, when I went into the stores, I realized very quickly that my product was in the sleepiest part of the department store. It was back in the corner and nobody was going there. So then I immediately um, uh, went to Target and I bought um, envelope dividing, dividers that you put on your home desk and I ran around Neiman Marcus and put them at every register and I put Spanx in them, and then I walked away. <laughs> and <laughs> Neiman's has like impeccable visual rules and regulations, and, um, and I did that because I had to get my product out of the department. And because I did that, women in shoes started buying Spanx, and women in contemporary, and, and um, those decisions made such a big difference. And by the time somebody figured out that nobody else had approved it, because you know, everybody thought somebody else approved it. Um, it was so successful that the head of Neiman's was like, whatever this girl's doing, let her keep doing it. Rule number two, ensure your success. I cold called Neiman's, Saks, Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, QVC. I was out on the road. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs make the mistake. They think once you get the order, you're golden. And that couldn't be any farther from the truth. Once you get the order, that's when the real work starts. I was absolutely determined to ensure my own success. And I think that's what it takes. I didn't want my success to be contingent on anyone else having to sell this. So I hit the ground running. And I went from department store to department store. And I would do morning rallies at the store where I would gather people around. Well, the store manager said, Sarah, you know, you can do it with the hosiery associates. Well, I'd travel all the way to Arizona and there'd be three hosiery associates. So I quickly was like, I gotta get the whole store at this morning rally. So I would go into the entrance before the store opened, like a Neiman's or a Saks or a Bloomingdale's, and I would run around and introduce myself to every employee setting up their station. I'd say, hi, I'm Sarah. And I would try to convince them that it would be worth their time to come see my morning meeting. And I got everybody there. I had taken the Oprah clip and the a little bit of local press I'd, I'd received and put it on a video and did that in my morning rally. And it was such an important thing that I was doing. I inadvertently was building a sales force that wasn't on my payroll. And they, all across the country, became my biggest advocates for the product and started selling it on behalf of Spanx and me. Rule number three, delegate your weaknesses. What's the best advice that you've received? Someone told me that what you delegate is 80% as good as you would have done it yourself. Let it go. Oh, wow. 
I took inventory of what am I good at, what am I not good at, what do I, you know, enjoy and don't enjoy, and they're usually the same thing, ironically. Like, I was very clear in the first year I was not good at shipping and handling, and I wasn't good at, you know, so many different things about managing the inventory, but I loved inventing the next idea. I loved the brand. I loved the way that I was communicating with consumers. So being able to free yourself up to do what you do best and let the people who do the other aspects do the best do it. Rule number four, don't be afraid to fail. And I think companies, if you can create a culture where they're not terrified to fail or make a mistake, then you're going you're gonna to be a highly uh, productive and more innovative culture. So t- having people feel free to laugh at themselves and watching me as their leader laugh at myself. I have oops meetings at Spanx where um, we get up and I tell them what I messed up at or a mistake that I made and I usually tell a funny story about it. And I encourage everybody else in the company to stand up and say that and then share and make it a funny story. And so I think that that helps. Also, if you want to learn from other successful women entrepreneurs, check out my 254 Girl Boss. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. When I was selling copiers door to door, I had a very clear vision of what my life was going to be like. From day one, I just, I never tried to hide that I was the girl in my apartment with the red backpack. Rule number five, be resourceful. When Spanx started, I got to set the stage a little bit for you. There were no self, there were no, uh, excuse me, Blackberries. No one had ever heard of an iPhone or an iPod before. I mean, the Kardashians were in like the fifth grade. <laughs> and MapQuest was just getting started. So half the time I was on my, the computer in the hotel that I was staying at and trying to MapQuest my next location. And it, w- it was a really crazy time. As I'm driving all around, I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, Actually, I, I remember this one time in Chicago. I had spent so much time alone on the road. I did an event at the Neiman Marcus outside of Evanston, I believe it was, at, in Oak Brook or North Brook. And I spent the whole day promoting lifting up my pant leg and turning and shaking my butt for everyone in the entrance. And that's, uh, you know, I'd been setting up these tables and moving them farther and farther out of the hosiery department to the point where they were in the entrance of Neiman Marcus. I mean, people would walk in, I'd go, hi, I'm Sarah. And I would flash them my butt and, you know, I was trying everything. I put donuts on the table. I was like, have a donut and some Spanx. Rule number six, be persistent. Every time I heard a no, I would just keep going. Once she finally got a yes, came the first sell. The very first place I called was Neiman Marcus, and I just kept calling the buyer on the phone until she picked up. I just said, I'm Sarah Blakely. I invented a product that is going to change the way your customers wear clothes. Please give me 15 minutes of your time. And I said, I will fly to Dallas. And she said, if you're willing to fly here, I will give you 15 minutes. So I booked a flight and halfway through telling her about the product, I mean, everything about her was perfect, right? I mean, her her belt matched her pen that matched her (laughs) shoes. And I was like highly intimidated sitting there with my my old backpack. And um, I said, you know what? I think you just need to come with me to the bathroom. What did she say? In mid pitch. And she went... Excuse me? And I said, yes, just just come with me to the bathroom. I'm going to show you what my product can do firsthand. Rule number seven, take control of your life. A lot of people think that Spanx started when I cut the feet out of my pantyhose, but actually it started long before that. Mm. It started when I was selling fax machines door to door and getting my car, business card ripped up in my face, being escorted out of buildings all day, every day, that I woke up one day and just thought, I'm in the wrong movie. Like, how did this happen? This is not my life. Yeah. Cut, scene, director, like, call the producer. And I got out a piece of paper and I wrote down, what am I good at? And the only thing in the good column was sales. And I thought, okay, what am I going to do with that? And I ended up writing in my journal, I'm going to invent a product and sell it to millions of people that will make them feel good. And then I asked the universe for an idea. And I was very specific. And it took two years. And I only cut the feet out of my pantyhose one time. And I was not going to squander any idea the universe gave me because I had really asked for it. And then the minute I cut the feet out, I started trying to make it. I started looking up manufacturers on the Mm. internet. This is before Alibaba, wasn't it? Yes. Rule number eight, differentiate yourself. You've got to differentiate yourself. I always ask myself, why am I different? How am I different? And I, I think it's very important to be I I call them the three C's, but clear, concise, and confident. You have to be able to describe it in a minute or less. Make it so clear. The customer really wants to make smart decisions, and they really want us to make it easy for them. So I always say, make somebody feel the pain, or if it's not the pain, 
uh, which means the problem on why you did what you did or why you're creating what you create, then explain to them your uniqueness. And then right after that, you've got to give them the solution very quickly, and then take it through and say why you're the best. I mean, very quickly, explain to them in just a few seconds why you're the best option. And I find that very, very helpful. So in everything I do, I ask myself, why am I different? Rule number nine, deal with rejections. I would call myself a girl who really likes to challenge herself to do things that scare her. To auditioning at Disney World. I ended up at Disney World because I failed the LSAT and I felt very sad that I most likely wasn't going to be heading off to law school. I am a terrible test taker. So I did what my parents said, of course, would be the most natural thing to do. And I got in my car and drove to Disney World and tried out to be goofy. And just to add, you know, insult to injury, I'm too short to be goofy. <laughs> so I just failed the LSAT. I went through all of the auditions to become a character and you have to be 5'8 to be goofy. Wow. And I'm 5'6, so I'm the height of a chipmunk. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So they wanted to make me a chipmunk. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is just be who you are. What keeps you so unbelievably grounded amid all your resounding success? I, I feel like success just makes you more of who you already were. I feel like money and success just does that. So it's like it holds a magnifying glass up to who you are. People, you know, people always ask me that, and I'm like, I don't know who else to be. I mean, I am who I am. So the money, the success, and um, so I like to say if you were a jerk before you got really successful <laughs> and a lot of money, you, you, you become a bigger jerk, really. And if you were insecure, you'll become more insecure. If you were nice, you'll become nicer. If you were generous, you'll become more generous. It's literally just a magnifying glass. Now I have a special bonus clip from Sarah on how to help others that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching a video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, where do you need to just be more of who you are? Number two, what's the rejection that you need to deal with and move past? And number three, what is the weakness that you need to start delegating? And if you promise to take action after watching this video, we don't just watch videos anymore, we do something after watching them. Give me a hashtag believe down in the comments, make that promise to yourself, and then get to work. As long as I can remember, I felt very compelled to help women. And I have had such extreme gratitude from an early age on being a woman born in America. I've been very acutely aware that I was born at the right time, in the right place, in the right country, and I would love to ensure that I can use my life and my success to help other women um, have the same opportunity, and then also help you know women everywhere to fulfill their best potential because I think that the world needs it. If you want more Sarah Blakely, check out the last top 10 I did on her. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I wanted to be a lawyer, and I'm a terrible test taker. After I basically bombed the LSAT, I tried out at Disney World to be goofy.